Hey everyone, my name is Jacqueline and welcome back to my channel. This is Jack and Kit, a place where I share about all the knitting and sewing I'm doing to create garments, quilts, bags, and accessories with more natural and sustainable fibers. In a world where everybody is obsessed with fast fashion and prime delivery, I'm just seeking a community where we slow down a little bit, we refine our skills, and we make things with our hands, just as our ancestors did. Join me each week as I talk about all of my creative hobbies, and don't miss out by clicking subscribe down below. And if you click that little bell, that'll also notify you each time I upload so you never miss a video from me. You can also find me on Instagram and Ravelry under the same name, Jack and Kit. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about what's been inspiring me this winter and what's caused me to stop, favorite, and save on Instagram. And I'm also going to go through which of those specific projects I'm planning to cast on later this winter. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, please keep watching and give this video a thumbs up so I know that these are the type of videos that you're interested in watching. The first item that really caught my eye this winter was the Carly Cardigan by Irene Lynn. And the one that I'm talking about in specific is the one that doesn't have sleeves, so it's almost like a vest cardigan. And the way that she styled it with this just really simple chambray button up underneath just looks so like 90s librarian, very classic. I think that it was a perfect styling and photo shoot to really show off the cables and the intricacies of this pattern. I really like the overall texture in it and the weight of the yarn that she used. I think it's so beautiful and it's pretty different than what else we're seeing out there cables wise. I really love the amount of positive ease that this item has. It just looks like something that you could throw over about any outfit. For me, I'm seeing it underneath like a thin turtleneck, even underneath just like a plain length long sleeve like this, but it looks really cool in the way that she specifically styled it underneath a button up. Next, I wanted to talk about the Blueberry Sweater by Sisu Knitwear. And for me, she's just been showing up all over my Instagram feed. I absolutely love her designs. I've been really into stranded, like, Fair Isle color work lately, as you saw from my last video. I almost feel like her designs almost put you into her Norwegian world. In the description of this sweater, she talks about how it's very common for Norwegians to pick blueberries, and so I liked that little tie-in. But it really just feels like to me that this looks like something like you would wear in Norway. For me, I like the simplicity of this sweater. I like that it doesn't have too many colors, so it really shows off that color work. It does look like it's a bottom-up circular yoke construction, so very similar to the last one I made by Lincoln Newman. But yeah, I just think this one is so beautiful and just screams winter to me. The next pattern I want to talk about is one that I mentioned last video, the porcelain sweater. This has kind of been my first intro and a beginning of my obsession with that bright cobalt blue. I think this sweater is a perfect representation of how in trends we saw things move from coastal grandmother into like quiet luxury. And this to me is like antiquing, like expensive grandma, quiet luxury. So to me, this is like the embodiment of that trend becoming popular. And this sweater has been so popular. I was at my local yarn store and I walked by and saw two friends knitting the same sweater in the exact same colors, these colors. Um, and so I think it just screams that trend. And it also is just so beautiful. I think that what's unique about this pattern is obviously it's complex, it's color work, but it also has a little bit of simplicity to it. And when you look at it, it just looks like something you could pair with a lot of your outfits, which I think is why it's so appealing. Next, I have the Egg Yo Sweater by Egg Yo Knit. And this is stunning. I think this year when that article came out about our knits not being as high of quality, I'll put that up on the screen here, I think ever since that article, cables have just been hotter than ever, and especially ones that look luxury. And I think to our eye, a lot of time luxury looks like that big, chunky, like it's taking a lot of yarn, it's taking thick yarn, um, that little fuzziness, it's taking expensive cashmere yarn. So for me, I really wanted to feature this pattern because it wasn't just your typical cabled sweater, but Ego is first of all an incredible designer. My friends and I are obsessed with what she does. 
but this one in particular I really loved the baby pink I thought it was a little bit different for winter you know it wasn't just that standard cream colored cable knit and I think it looks so beautiful in that dusty mauve very light pink um, it just looks squishy it looks luxe it's perfect and I think it is so beautiful next I have the anemone sweater when I first saw this on Instagram, I immediately liked, commented, saved. The way that she picked out these colors, I think so perfectly matches the aesthetic of this sweater. It's just so beautiful. I really like this whole Scandi design. It's a very good mix of a modern sweater with a very traditional Scandinavian like floral motif. And I just think it's so beautiful. It, would be really cute. I think she has a child pattern as well to have like a mom and me matching sweater I think would just be so adorable. But yeah, I, I love this. I would actually do it in the exact same colors because I think that it is perfect. Next I have the Grandma Core Hood by Veronica Lindbergh and I actually picked this because my friend was making it and when she sent me the pattern I just thought it was so adorable and in Wisconsin, it's been like a real feel of negative 31 this week. And so anything that we can think of that will give us that little bit of extra warmth, I think is on our minds and we've been wanting to knit up. This in particular, I think is a really good feminine take on the design. I love the lace work. I think it would be really cute styled over an outfit, even just down. So like you're wearing it as almost like a hood as a compliment to any sort of outfit. And then, you know, obviously as a layering piece, you could have whatever you're wearing, the hood, a jacket. Um, but I just think it's something that, again, you wouldn't find in a store. It's very unique. It looks very high end and it's just beautiful. So next I have the very classic Musselboro hat and I've been dying to cast this on ever since I started knitting. Whenever I first started on Ravelry, it was like always the number one thing on what was in the top patterns and I was always like, why? It's just like, it, to me it looks just like, like a Carhartt hat or whatever. But I have come to understand that what people love about it is the simple construction and that it has so many layers of fabric so it's actually warm it's very stretchy so it usually has a very good fit and then what's cool about it is you can pretty much use any yarn and then as you go you set um which needles and like how many stitches you're going to use depending on what your gauge is at so you don't actually have to gauge swatch you just kind of start knitting and then you measure it and then you follow the pattern according to what your current gauge is. So I just think that's really cool. I also think this is just a classic pattern that's going to look good on anybody. Okay, so as far as what I'm actually going to make, obviously I can't make all of these things. I don't have the funds nor the time. And so the first thing that I know I'm going to knit this winter is a Musselboro hat in this beautiful yarn. So this is Malabrigo. It's in their ultimate sock in the color Sir. I'll show it to you. I have a Patagonia coat that's a really dark navy, but the whole lining is this like deep magenta color. Um, it's like a magenta leaning purple. And so I picked out this yarn to match it. I thought it would be really cute and it would be something that would match my coat, but it's also, um, just like bright and colorful for those winter months. So I'm really excited about this because it's very squishy and soft and I think it's gonna match so beautifully with my coat. The next thing that I'm hoping to cast on is that Carly cardigan. Let me know if you guessed that that would be something that I would be making. I just, I love it so much. I've never done cables before, so what's probably gonna happen is I'm gonna be walking you through what that process is like for me, if I survive, if I can handle it. Um, I have a gift card to a shop that sells the yarn that she made it in, that it's the Kinson Co. Osprey, I believe. So I haven't decided what color I'm going to do it in. I love the idea of doing a pastel. I think light colors show cables the most beautifully. And as you guys have seen, I'm really loving just like bright colors lately. So I could see myself doing either like a robin's egg blue or a really pale green like a lime I'm, I'm thinking like a really pale lime green might be kind of cool um 
I also just recently saw somebody knitting something in a very, very pale yellow. And I thought that was actually beautiful and, and not something that I would typically pick. I think they called it, it was like a banana cream. I can't remember which yarn dyer it was from, but that was also very inspiring to me. So yeah, you'll have to stay tuned to see what I pick for that. And then lastly, I've been really inspired to cast on an October sweater, and that's because of Knee Knits. She just made something out of the Sorella yarn. I think she used their cashmere sock base, but she used a tonal yarn. I believe it was tonal. It might have been variegated. Um, if it was variegated, it was like just a very slight variegation. But I have been so inspired by Explore Knits monochrome collection. I believe it's supposed to drop next week for pre-order, and I... I'm thinking there's something in there that I need to get. I haven't decided what yet, but I love the idea of using one of those for that October sweater. Um, right now, there's a couple of colors really standing out to me. I mean, the one standing out to me the most is Pepperoncini, which I really don't think that I'm brave enough to wear something like that around. So I don't think it's gonna be that. Um, I do really like the color Balsamico, that's beautiful. She's yet to release the blues, and I've really been liking blues lately, so I could see myself doing something like that, but I just love that collection. I think it's so beautiful. So I am gonna see as the rest release and um, kind of come up with something there. I'm really excited about that. So thank you guys for sticking around with me as I talked about all of my knitting plans and what I plan to cast on. If you're curious to see my process through any of those things, I tend to share a lot within my stories. And I also like to write some details in my Ravelry. You can find me on both at Jack and Kit. Other than that, I hope you have a great rest of your week and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.